Thank you, Lars, and thank you also for disambiguating the title because you may have uh, thought that this was going to be a continuation on English literature, uh, given that uh, uh, this is a quote from Shakespeare. Uh, but as Lars said, it's actually about something else. It's about a use case of the uh, Klein research infrastructure from the fields of historical linguistics and the history of linguistics. It's joint research with um, Alex Erdmann, who is uh, here today, and with Brian Joseph, who unfortunately could not be here. Um, so let's see whether I got the right direction here. Yes. But Brian was the one who got uh, us started with this. He actually wrote me an email in August uh, 2015, and he wrote at that time, Hi, I have a question about the German lexicon. I have noticed that whereas most early mentions of Albanian in American works use the designation Albanian, Leonard Bloomfield, in his 1933 work language, uses Albanese. I wonder, of course, if Bloomfield was influenced by his German training and by the German adjective Albanesisch. So I'm wondering if there is any way to gauge the relative frequency of German Albanisch versus Albanesisch between 1850 and 1950. We get inquiries like this uh, about once a month, but rarely are they put so well and the homework is defined so clearly. Uh, so, uh, Brian closed with thanks in advance for any help uh, you can offer. And uh, the uh, passage that, uh, oops, uh, that uh, Brian was alluding to is actually uh, given on the slide. Uh, it's a, a quote from the famous uh, Introduction to Linguistics by Leonard Bloomfield, where he writes in the same way, finding all these languages and groups, Sanskrit, Iranian, Greek, uh, sorry, uh, Armenian, Greek, and now Albanese, Latin, Celtic, Germanic, Baltic, Slavic, resemble each other beyond the uh, possibility of mere change, uh, chance, we call them the Indo-European family of languages. So this is uh, where the trouble started, so to speak. Now, uh, the next slide kind of gives you a snapshot of the relevant terms from contemporary English and German. So in contemporary English, the country is referred to as Albania, uh, and in German as Albanian. The people are referred to in English as Albanian or Albanians, in a German both in the singular and plural as Albana. The language as Albanian, and in uh, contemporary German as Albanisch, and the same for the generic adjectives for, the, um, for things having to do with the country. So Bloomfield indeed sticks out uh, from a contemporary usage point of view in using Albanese. So uh, we started uh, by looking at an historical uh, corpus of uh, American English, uh, just to rule out that Brian was wrong, and it actually came uh, uh, from English to begin with, say, 19th century English. Um, and uh, this corpus is actually quite well known and widely used, uh, and it's collected and um, uh, hosted by Mark Davies at Brigham Young University. It's one of the, I think, hallmarks of how an online corpus as a web application uh, should be done. So for the 19th century, uh, the uh, corpus contains only two occurrences that refer uh, to um, a person of Albanian origin, two occurrences of the word Albanese, that is. Um, and there are 28 occurrences in total. The other 26 are from the 20th century, and they actually all refer, refer to uh, a person with the last name Albanese, most prominently an Italian opera singer who had some claim to fame in the 1940s in New York. So here comes the first lesson learned. Never believe your corpus, right? So um, if 
we hadn't dug deeper, we would have said, well, Albanese seems to be uh, alive and well, and in fact growing uh, in usage in the 20th century. So the first lesson learned is you actually have to inspect your data, which isn't always easy, as the previous speaker already uh, mentioned, if the size of the corpus is large. So now that we ruled out um, uh, that we ruled out uh, English as a likely source uh, for Bloomfield's usage, we turned to German, and here we used uh, three historical corpora. Uh, for various reasons, uh, this selection made sense to us. The first one is the uh, Google Books collection of digitized German books. Uh, it has the right coverage that we're looking for, namely from 1800 to 2000. The size is unknown, right, because uh, there isn't actually uh, any published work on this, uh, but we do know that it's very large, right? Uh, actually larger than the other two. Uh, the second is the uh, German text archive uh, housed at the Klarin Center at the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences in Berlin. Uh, coverage uh, 1600 uh, to 1900, 142 million words accessible uh, via the client infrastructure. And the third one uh, is sort of the complement uh, to the German text archive for the 20th century, uh, the corpora of the Digitale Werke, Wer, Digitales Wörterbuch der Deutschen Sprache, also housed at the BWAW. Now, there was another reason we wanted to contrast the Google Books corpus with Clarin corpora, because after all, uh, one of the things that uh, people in Clarine probably get asked the most by critics is, why do you need to develop all these resources and tools? Don't you just uh, go to Google and Google can do it all for you already? So uh, we thought this would also be uh, an interesting use case to see uh, how the functionalities of the uh, Google Books corpus matches up uh, to the client infrastructure. And that's a, this is also why uh, we then started with the Google Books collection and their really very, very good Ngram viewer. And we entered here the words Albanish and Albanesish. Uh, uh, and uh, what you uh, can see here, not very well, uh, but uh, what you uh, can see is that uh, Albanesish actually uh, outranks uh, Albanish, which then, of course, supports the hypothesis that Bloomfield's usage of the term may come very well from German, an hypothesis that's also supported by the fact that uh, Bloomfield's linguistics professors all had German origin, and he himself, Bloomfield, spent two years abroad as a visiting scholar at the University of Göttingen in Leipzig, as you can find out from his Wikipedia entry. Now, if uh, the name uh, Albanese is the preferred designation of the language, then one would assume that the people uh, from Albania in the 19th century German would be referred to as Albanesen, right? Albanesisch, uh, Albanesen, that would be the natural pair. And again, we consulted the uh, Google Books collection. And the results are somewhat surprising or disturbing, however, whichever adjective uh, you would prefer, in that Albana is actually much more frequent uh, and outranks Albanese, Albanese uh, in uh, the Google Books corpus. What are we supposed to conclude from that, right? One uh, conclusion would be, that Albana is actually uh, the preferred term to refer to the people from Albania, and Albanese is a kind of uh, secondary variant. And here uh, is the next surprise. This conclusion is actually incorrect, um, as we will see in a minute. So what that what does that tell us? It tells us that we can't simply look at unigrams without actually looking at what these terms refer to. And uh, we found this out only once we started inspecting the linguistic context of uh, the uh, lemmas involved uh, using the German text archive. And this is uh, 
what is shown on this next slide, uh, which t shows you first that the words Albanish and Albana are actually uh, the earlier terms. They're older in some sense in this corpus. So the first occurrences of both terms are already in the 17th century with Albanesish and Albanese entering the corpus roughly with the French Revolution. Okay, So they're uh, about uh, a century younger, as it were. And the latest data point for all four of them is 1913, which happens to be the last uh, year that's currently covered by the DTA. Now, uh, it turns out that Albanesisch and Albanese, if you look in the corpus uh, for uh, the reference of these terms, always refers to uh, the people or the language of Albania. Uh, but here comes the big surprise, Albana actually has nothing to do with Albania. It refers to people north of Rome, right? So there is an area north of Rome called the Alban Mountains. And uh, since uh, the um, corpus of the DTA covers lots of history books, uh, including books, of course, about the Roman Empire, this term is also very well represented in the DTA, as it was, as you will recall, in the Google Books collection. So um, Ibana then actually uh, refers uh, to people north of Rome. Some of the uh, collocations that you find here uh, are uh, Alban Mountains, Alban Kings, and an Alban Lake, all having to do with this geographical location. Now, uh, the uh, term Ibanish is actually the most interesting one because it's ambiguous. It can refer both to uh, people from this area north of Rome or to things having to do with the country of Albania. So in, given that knowledge, it's also kind of clear why these words, Albanesisch and Albanese, were invented because they follow a well-known strategy in natural language in general of ambiguity avoidance, right? By calling somebody an Albanese, you made sure that people knew this is not somebody from north of Rome. And by talking about Albanese, you made it quite clear uh, that this is a person from Albania or having to do with Albania and not being subjected uh, to the um, ambiguous term Albanish. So Paul Grice, among others, uh, of course, have told us that such a pragmatic principle of uh, uh, quality is uh, in evidence in natural language. Um, and you can also see this uh, in the bigrams uh, of the Google n-grams. So what you can see here is that for the 19th century, the bigram Albanesische Sprache actually outranks Albanische Sprache, and it's only when the unigram uh, Albanesisch kind of fell out of favor that uh, then uh, the term Albanische Sprache, Albanisch uh, being uh, um, ambiguous uh, to begin with, then as it were, took over the job of referring to people of Albania only. Uh, so I've told you about the 19th century. In one minute, I will tell you the rest of the story by uh, talking about the DVDS corpus. So this is the corpus of the 20th century. So what you see here is that Alba uh, Albanesisch is a word that's dying out. So in contemporary German, uh, Albanisch is in fact now the only uh, adjective being used. But at the time when Bluefield was writing language, Albanesisch was live, alive and well, and therefore the likely source of his usage in his book language. Uh, the uh, semantic change of uh, Albanese to Albana is actually uh, even more interesting in a way, because what is happening here is that yet another word kind of timidly is 
entering the stage in the 20th century that kind of builds a bridge between a word that's dying out, namely Albanesen, and a word that's just coming into existence, namely Albana, which is the present uh, term. And in between, when speakers aren't quite sure what to use, some use Albania. Uh, this, by the way, uh, but that's just a side note, uh, might be an interesting uh, finding for uh, game theorists who are uh, looking at semantic change as a way of words competing for the stage. And that's uh, what I think is actually going on here. Now, uh, Lars is going to uh, tell me in no time that I'm out of time. Uh, but, uh, of course, there is the old trick, and I hope I can do this now. Uh, well, yes, there is the old trick of referring cataphorically to the discussion period, right? So if you have no questions, I have an additional offering, uh, which is a tool called Diacolo, collocation analysis in diachronic uh, perspective. Uh, this is uh, a movie that tells you what the collocations, following up on the previous talk, of the word Albana are, uh, starting uh, with uh, the 16th century and going all the way to the year 2000. And if I don't have a chance to show you the movie, I can tell you what it's all about. So Diacolo is actually a web application that's built by Brian Jurish. It's a Clarin use case. It's also on the Clarin web page. And it shows you, for any given time slice, what its typical collocations are. And the uh, actually, somebody is playing the movie already. I have nothing to do with it. Um, and so what's happening is the first collocation, the oldest one, is Römer, Romans, which is actually no accident, right? But as we're going uh, along in time, the most strong collocate in the 20th century is Zerbe, uh, which, of course, is also not surprising uh, given uh, the um, Yugoslavian wars in the 1990s, uh, the uh, Albanians and the Serbians coll collocated in all kinds of way uh, in friendly and not so unfriendly terms. Um, and uh, I just want to, if I may indulge you, uh, give you a couple of lessons learned because we are thinking of this as a use case. And um, the lessons learned for us were don't trust corpus unigrams. Uh, take a look at keyword and context. Look at collocation analysis. Uh, and uh, what's crucial in terms of functionality, and this is where Google ngrams, unfortunately, is lacking at the moment, is a seamless uh, navigation from the corpus occurrences uh, to their uh, context exploration in terms of keyword and context. So this, and that's the good news, I think, for Clarin, is why we're needed. And Google Ngrams, although they have a very good Ngram viewer, doesn't quite suffice for our purposes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And thank you for showing the movie. There's still some time for questions and discussion. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd be so bold and ask what's so nice about the Ngram viewer. And um, that's uh, just a part of the question because I wonder um, how will we, I mean, this um, shows how, how much better it works and how essential it is, like you said, to have the uh, connection to the keyword and context index which, um, of course, with the Google Books corpus is never um, what you see in the, in the Ngram viewer, um, even if you seem to have a look into the corpus, but you don't, and then you have all the missing things and everything uh, in the Google Books corpus. But um, I wonder if we as Clarine um, have to do some sort of contrastive um, advertising for our tools um, a little more, and if we can take up this... Um, um, much bigger um, competitor, uh, Google. But um, uh, examples like this, I think, are needed. Um, and I wonder, what should our strategy be? 
should we use um, Google Books and say, well, this is good and this is uh, not so good, but ours is better in some respects. So it's kind of hard after presentations like, th like this um, to uh, tell people, um, well, what you actually want to tell them is don't use uh, Google Books for your research, maybe as an entry point, as you d did. Um, but you also said the Engram viewer is quite good, so maybe we should build something like that in Clarin. Uh, yes, thank you for that question. Um, uh, I uh, uh, would like to kind of use a metaphor uh, that was introduced by the previous speaker, namely that of distant and close reading. I think the uh, Google um, uh, Engram viewer is great for distant reading. It's good as a data exploration tool, uh, that can tell you something uh, about what you're looking, uh, looking for. It can tell you some trends. Uh, but then, if you stop there, uh, you are in real danger of missing the boat, as I showed you a couple of times uh, in this presentation. Um, I must admit that I, of course, had a strong chlorine bias when I did this homework, right? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, but um, there was actually a colleague who also replied uh, to Brian Joseph's email who said exactly what we would expect. Oh, just use Ngram Viewer, right? Okay. So I was in a way uh, also then charged with the homework of trying that out. And uh, the Google Ngram Viewer is good if you know what you're doing and if you know that unigrams uh, can, of course, in an intelligent way, and if you have enough knowledge, as our previous speaker uh, was saying already about your domain, using the right biograms, right? So if you then actually uh, probe quite uh, pointedly for the, the um, uh, biograms in German now, of course, but uh, translated into in English, Albanese language versus Albanian language, right? Then you again get very good, re very informative results, right? Uh, another topic uh, which I didn't touch upon here uh, is, of course, the question of metadata, right? Uh, and I think uh, if we want to build, and I'm, where is Daria, right? Uh, so uh, when we are talking about user uh, interaction here and, and selling points, I think um, a, a known difficulty in, uh, is, uh, when, with uh, the uh, project Gutenberg, for example, which we didn't explore here, but it's actually incorporated in the Ngram viewer, so in a way that uh, 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 was uh, definitely on the table, uh, even though just implicitly, is that the, uh, that the metadata are actually very, very poor, which is uh, an issue when you're actually looking at semantic change, right? Because you may actually get the wrong time designations. And this is, again, a take-home message, I think, for everybody in Klarin. Uh, good metadata curation uh, is actually important and uh, an activity that is well underway in Klein and should continue. There is time for one short question up there. Uh, aha. Thank you, Erhard. Um, I have a question about your suggestion that the disambiguation might be, sorry, that the use of two different words might be an effort on the part of writers to disambiguate between Albania and this region in Italy. That presupposes that um, the writers knew the place in Italy and, and you didn't. So how, do you have any evidence that this is true? For example, do you have any evidence of a text where both terms are used? Um, I don't have a, a kind of meta text that would uh, kind of uh, put this as a theme. Uh, but um, the, uh, the first reaction I had when I got this email from Brian is that Albana, uh, of course, also has something to do in the bigram uh, with this uh, region north of, of Rome, right? And uh, this is because I learned Latin in high school, right? And so you, you read these kinds of texts, and uh, I think this, uh, so I'm uh, thankful for your uh, question, Pauline. Uh, I think this is also one of the reasons that uh, Albana has used its original meaning, 
uh, because uh, as people do not have this sort of Latin-based education anymore, what we call Bildung in German, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the word is kind of up for grabs, as it were. And I think uh, what I found very interesting as a linguist in the end is actually uh, exactly what the conditions are, and this is what I would like to explore further, why this change is happening to begin with. I think other relevant factors, but I can only mention them here, uh, have to do with Albania became, becoming much more prominent in the 20th century as an area, uh, whereas this, uh, pardon to our Italian colleagues, yeah, the city, uh, this uh, area north of Rome is kind of losing importance and prominence. And that, I think, is another factor. And finally, language contact, because English, uh, of course, has uh, the uh, designation uh, uh, Albanian, and I think that was another reason that uh, German kind of fell into place. So there's language contact, uh, contact and uh, historical developments going on at the same time. But I was supposed to be short. Thank you very much for being short, and thanks again. Thank